Welcome to the Halo Outreach Podcast, where we reach out to you, the Halo community, to keep you up to date on everything that's going on in the Halo universe. Welcome, everybody, to episode number 33 of the Halo Outreach Podcast. And as you guys can see, if you are viewing this, if you're on Spotify, obviously you can't see, but we have a very special guest today, Blaze Dillon, who uh, formerly worked at 343 and was one of the brainchilds behind one of my favorite playlists in Halo 5, the Mythic Arena playlist. And we will deep dive into that with him in a little bit. Uh, just want you to just say hi to everybody, Blaze, so they can hear your lovely voice. You're muted. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get used to this push to talk. Yeah, there you so, go. But welcome to the podcast, everybody. Yes, sweet. And of course, here to my uh to my left, I guess I would say, uh would be Kevin Kulex, my fellow co host, as usual, joining me on this podcast adventure. How you doing, Kevin? Doing well, Mr. Pitt. Just uh, you know, excited to do a little podcasting today and uh been yeah i've been basically just kind of held up inside here in seattle uh you know yeah. i've been basically at home for the last two and a half weeks it's been uh kind of the same <laughs> yeah it's like when you've seen those memes where it's like when you find out your lifestyle is called quarantine <laughs> <laughs> yeah really uh not much has changed for me personally i tend to stay away from people in general so this is like i was built for this you know i could literally shut myself off from the world and be <laughs> fine but hopefully everybody out there is staying safe staying healthy mm. and maybe this podcast will provide a few people with you know just a little bit of an escape uh from what's going on in their daily lives we have a little bit of halo news to talk about not much went on this week that's why we really wanted to seek to get somebody on to entertain you guys so uh we'll go over a h2a flighting update for pc we're also going to talk about some mcc nameplate feedback that postums had made like a thread on on the waypoint forums that we thought was a pretty interesting topic we'll also go over the three for three response to delay fears for halo infinite um you know obviously series x could get delayed because of the whole coronavirus thing and then of course we'll do you know like our playlist updates and stuff like that as usual to cap out the show and if we're of course going to get to know blaze a little bit and ask him a few questions about basically what he's done um and seeing where maybe he's going in the future uh, <laughs> so first let's talk about the h2a flight update basically not much new here uh basically we're still on track supposedly for the end of march as a flight uh, could happen for H2A and Halo 2 as well, as well as possibly the Reach audio fixes that we went over last week. And um, basically 343 is working from home right now uh, with this whole corona outbreak. Microsoft gave them the okay to work from home, so that's kind of interesting. I wonder uh, what kind of limitations that presents. Uh, you know, for a developer working from home, I, obviously I wouldn't think all the tools necessary would be available to them from home, but maybe with technology nowadays it really isn't bad as what i'm thinking it is i mean i mean maybe blaze i don't know if you could shed light on that what what would you think as far as you know working from home as far as a, a developer goes muted <laughs> <laughs> push it all right it's only the left control that works my right, right. control is not fine to it. we're slowly getting there. Um, we're getting there. yeah <laughs> so I I believe everyone will have enough of the tools to get their job done. Um, definitely something that they are more prepared to do than other companies. Mm. Um, so it probably won't put too much of an impact on most people. I think everyone there is a hard worker, so uh, I think they'll be able to focus and get their work done and cool. stay on track as much as they're able to. Yeah, would you cool. say that, I don't know if you know much about like the process behind it, but would you say it's kind of rather like autonomous work, really kind of like at your computer working on what you need to finish and then you kind of just like share it with everybody once it's done kind of thing? Or is it kind of like, or you, there's a lot like, of communication between people you kind of have to like always be on kind of thing? 
Um, it definitely is nice to just be able to walk across the room and ask questions if you need direction on anything. But I think at this point, everyone has the direction that they need to kind of go about their projects and complete what they need. Mm -hmm. um, also, I'm sure they have pretty constant meetings through um, either voice calls or visual calls like even this here. Uh, so I think the communication isn't as big of a deal, even though it is definitely nice to just be able to get up and walk over to somebody's desk mm -hmm. if you have any help, have anything you need help with. Yeah, right on, yeah. Because it's kind of a similar situation I'm going through right now. Like, obviously, it's easier when everyone's just in the same place. You can just kind of, like, look over and be like, hey, you need some help or something like that, you know. But, uh, like I said, my work, it's rather, you know, I'm just kind of at my computer plugging away. And then if we need to help, we, you know, we always have chats open or we can jump into calls real quick. So it's really not impacting our, our and our, what we do for work, like, really much at all with the staying at yeah. home. I could see, I could see it being be like, issue. I could see it being different, like, you know, for Joe Schmoes, like me or, you know, uh, you know, us, like for 343, they're all very passionate about Halo. And when you're passionate about something, I could see it, um, you know, not being as much of an obstacle for them, you know, working from home. I knew if I was working from home, it would be uh, much tougher, you know, with all the distractions at your home. Uh, you know, like the Xbox or your PC or things like that to be like, you know, oh, let me just go uh, play a quick game or two. But, you know, it's yeah, right. uh, <laughs> I think it's definitely different when, you know, you're, uh, you know, working on something that you love so much. So that's 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 pretty cool that they like like Blaze said, you know, that he doesn't think there would be a problem with them um, mm. as far as working hard and, and getting things done, getting what they need to get done. So that's that's very comforting to hear, obviously. But I mean, if they would have delayed something, I I'm sure, you know, a couple of people be like, oh, my God, here we go again. But, uh, you know, some of us more level headed people would have been like, all right, yeah, I, I get why, you know, these things are delayed because maybe they have some obstacles that they have to overcome from working from home. But definitely very comforting to hear that they should be able to stay on track and, and get out, get it out, hopefully by the end of the month. If not, I still think it'll be first couple of weeks of April. I, you know, I mm. we have yet to see uh like nothing go wrong, no blocking bugs, nothing happened in ring one and two where it would get out to the ring three flight testing um right away. So I still think they might find a couple of things and, and push it back maybe a week. But um Yeah. Still still good news. I would to hear. say I would say within a week or two of the end of March, early April, yeah, yeah we get yep. it. And yeah, that'd be sweet. Looking forward to play some H2 yeah. NPC for sure. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. And of course any delays are obviously important i they're not i'm sure they're not looking forward to delaying anything even if they have to um they're only going to do it if they need that time um so all in all it can only help if that ends up being the case correct mm, cool for sure right. what um let, before we move on i just want to ask what are your opinions on h2a blaze because me and kevin have very specific opinion like i personally it's one of my favorite halos uh because i love i know you love halo 2 as well uh halo 2 and halo 5 much like myself uh, two of our favorite multiplayers so uh what are your opinions on h2a are you really looking forward to it coming to pc i think the single player was knocked out of the park i really mm -hmm. like all of the updates and the updated visuals and stuff like that um for me personally the art direction of the multiplayer maps is a little bit out of my personal preference um obviously they're still pretty beautiful and everything um and there's some choices that they made for the multiplayer that maybe weren't in my preference but i definitely think that they did a pretty good job um only wish that there were more maps for it and stuff Same hopefully yeah hopefully uh with modding modders and stuff like that that eventually forge will be able to be updated or like how we saw in uh reach from the modding community with unlimited objects and stuff like that if we could get that in uh h2a that would definitely be really cool cool yeah i agree mm -hmm. did you ever uh, right, well, uh, i actually got a question do you ever did you bother much with the uh, heel 2 anniversaries forge because i know you kind of really got that's kind of how you got involved with uh getting involved with halo kind of side of things is through that right yeah, so I, at that point, I was forging since, you know, Halo 3. 
mm-hmm. and pretty much every single game I have a handful of designs and different content and uh, different successes within those games um, and H2A was no different for sure mm-hmm. cool yeah it was definitely a definitely something the right definitely it was like a evolution of Forge before Halo 5 came out and it kind of just blew everyone blew the doors off the hinges right there with the, that Forge for sure but yeah I never really bothered with it. I used to forge a lot back in like in Halo Three and Reach, but ever since. But then like, no one ever was ever playing my maps, <laughs> just because I was like I just spent all the time making it. And then I'm like, oh wait, I need friends to play with this on it. They all want to hop on at the same time and play my little custom map. It's hard to line that up, as you know. I'm sure you know Blaze, and uh, we'll definitely get into that a little bit when we're talking about the Mythic Arena and stuff like that. But like. uh but yeah, so I kind of fallen out of it a little bit, but I used to do it a lot back in Halo Three. Like that was my, that was like my main thing I did in that game. It was fun. Cool. Mm-hmm. Especially with all the little weird like glitches and tricks you can pull off with that game to make things work better than they're supposed to. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so I guess we're ready to move on to the next topic. Topic about the MCC nameplate feedback. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Let's do that. All right. So uh, take it away, Pete. All right, well, MCC nameplate feedback. Pretty self-explanatory here, people. Uh, basically, Postums made a post. Wow. Of it's like it's, it's almost like what he does. They were taking... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. Uh, made, a, made a post about some feedback for what people wanted or what the community wanted for MCC and nameplates. And um, personally, I will go first, I guess, of what I want, and we'll go down the line here. Um, I said, I, I really like, first of all, what they did with Reach. With the update with Reach, I thought the nameplates took a big step forward uh, compared to the base game of what we got for nameplates. Uh, you could definitely tell the difference of the newer nameplates versus the older nameplates of that launch with the game. I would personally like to see maybe some animated nameplates, something along those lines, something moving, uh, I think would be cool for the harder uh, achievements to do in game. And I specifically wanted maybe a dedicated 100% completion for each Halo game for achievements. Oh, that'd be cool, so, yeah. You, know, you complete all the CE achievements, you get one, Halo 2, and then for the overall MCC, having like a really badass, uh, maybe Master Chief animated nameplate um, to you know showcase 100% completion of achievements because I think that'd be a really cool thing for um, kind of, you know, this is a really good opportunity three for three. You guys can take this yeah. Halo 3 better be like Hayabusa or Katana related. <laughs> that would be pretty dope to like. Uh oh. We lost the pad. On your back. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> you froze up there for so, a second. Um, oh, did I? Oh, yeah. sure. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if everybody heard that, but yeah. Um, hmm. And then on top of that, I would also like. There was another thing there. Oh, Halo 5. Uh, if you won 52 in Halo 5, I would like to see maybe some. Froze up again there. <laughs> I thought that'd be a cool nameplate as well. Spectrum. <laughs> God damn Spectrum! <laughs> Can't stand it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you heard that, but one fifty-two Halo mm-hmm. Five nameplate. I yeah. Want. Yeah, that'd be sweet. You. Uh, I actually did bother to actually reply on the forum for this one, and I thought I would kind of share my. We actually had some th- similar ideas there, Pat. We're about animated nameplates. Oh, go figure. I said it would be pretty awesome. Just like, yeah. even like something like how, like the, uh, in the Halo 5 emblem, where if you went to a tournament or an event, you had like that flashing HDS one. I like yeah. that one a lot. So like something simple like that. It doesn't have to be like some like, you know, it doesn't have to look like a Disney movie in your nameplate. It just has something a little <laughs> interesting, you know? <laughs> Right. And then um, I thought, like, also, kind of like, I really kind of like the idea of like the numbered nameplates that they had in Halo 5. Just kind of cool for like, um, you know, different communities within Halo, like for clans and stuff like that. That would be pretty cool. And also, like, just kind of like general, like, cool looking design kind of stuff. Like, it doesn't have to be like necessarily like Halo looking, just like some cool looking design, kind of like the new um, Grassroots nameplate or like like the winter contingency nameplate where it's like that ice with the skull on it is it just looks cool i do like that one yeah yeah but it doesn't necessarily have to be like halo related or also something like with uh the different factions within halo like or different markings or symbols within halo that kind of means something like the the mark of shame that for the arbiter or the unsc logo uh or like halo wars 2 banished logo which actually looks pretty sick as well and then uh i also just in exclamations i just wrote yap yap nameplate as well 
uh, but that was like my brief little thing i could go on about him but that's kind of like my thoughts on the whole thing as well yeah uh, how about you blaze you you grind out uh mtc nameplates much or are you kind of just like yeah like because uh, some people care about it some people are just like yeah it's just nameplates uh, so that would be something that I'd probably do. I've been heads down in many different projects and my own stuff, so I haven't really been able to play mm. a whole lot. Um, plus, I played all of those games to death. Um, so True. most of my time spent playing games is mythic nowadays. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but as far as the nameplates, uh, I think the more you can add, the better, honestly. Mm. Uh, one, I don't know if this was just from visual feedback. I didn't actually uh, get to read the post yet. But uh, one thing that I always wanted with the nameplates was once you unlocked them, seeing how you unlocked them mm. might have even been updated. But I I noticed that you can see how to unlock each one, but then once you unlock it, you don't get any that's true. feedback of how you unlock that. Yeah, still uh, like so that. that's definitely something that I would uh, push for feedback uh, visually, though, I I think any sort of additions. I agree with you guys' ideas of animated ones and 100% uh, completion for each game. And uh, the 152 for Halo 5, I think, would be a, a really cool, like, backwards one mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, that's actually really good feedback because I can't imagine how many times I've gone through. Because personally, I like... I would think most people would be the same way. I don't really choose maybe the most visually appealing one to me, but basically the one that's really hard to get. So when I'm going back through my nameplates and looking like, hmm, which one should I rock to show off to people? I don't know <laughs> how, how do, the hell I got these nameplates. How do I <laughs> so, flex um, properly? <laughs> yeah, how do I really flex on these scrubs real quick? Uh, you know, so I, I've definitely done that several times. I'm like, all right, man, how did I get this one? Uh, mm -hmm. Should I be wearing this one? Or is, is it really easy to get that a lot of people would have? So that I, I think that's really good feedback. And I honestly totally forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. it hasn't been updated yet. It still doesn't show um, how you unlock the nameplate. So yeah, it's, it's, it's still going to be a pretty awesome nameplate for the change of mind, though, because I'm rocking the fire unicorn. Because it's, it's, it's yeah, like wow. I have a special connection with it just because like I got my Christmas song put up on Halo Waypoint. On um, like a yeah. community update, from I was Union rocking Shack. that until I got that new HCS grass, which I don't even like the HCS, <laughs> the new one. I think the old one looks way better. Uh, but I won the new HCS grass one, so I'm rocking that because I have many people rocking it. But mm -hmm. it's it's really not that appealing <laughs> looking to be. I think it looks cool though. I like it's clean. Eh. It's sharp. I don't know. I Fresh. like the old one. I like I think the old one looks cooler. Mm -hmm. But that's just me. But yeah. So yeah, cool like little nameplates, guys. Uh, like I said, a uh, link to this would be in the description of the video and in Podbean and also on Spotify in the description. Uh, so if you guys want to leave your feedback, go check out that link. You can leave your little feedback on what you would like to see for nameplates on the MCC. Because we figured it probably with a lot of progression coming up with like probably a new season, I'm assuming with Halo 2 Anniversary coming around, we're probably going to be seeing a lot of nameplates <laughs> uh, yeah. for like progression. So we'll see what happens with that. But yeah. Uh, I guess we can go move on to the next topic, but the three for three response to delays. I mean, we kind of touched on this already a little bit earlier, but uh, we did get like a little bit of a feedback from uh, Unishack on that one. Uh, really, kind of just real brief. Basically, kind of he also just kind of went over and talked about the uh, you know the home field advantage is what he called it basically. <laughs> and he also noted mm -hmm. that he also I like how in the poster he didn't mention that how these two Spartans in the post are saying that. Comfortable at least six feet away from each other. Oh god! For uh, you know, social distancing there. <laughs> but um, basically, just kind of, you mentioned about uh, you know we're we're removing all obstacles in our path and we'll tackle uh, and tackling tracking well. Oh my god, I can't read. <laughs> but we be mindful of the limitations, understanding of the uh, whole situation going on. So basically, they're saying that like with mcc and pc and halo infinite that they're still tracking well there's really there's not a big hit when it comes to you know meeting deadlines and stuff like that or meeting um goal goal posts that the goal goal posts that they need to hit yeah something's wrong with my voice today i guess so uh i've been seeing like a lot of videos i've seen like you know articles written up about like halo infinite delay xbox delay and stuff like that but you know i did see a tweet from uh major nelson as well talking about 
you know, you know, he was referring to more about like that leak that came out saying like, you know, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. Day release. Yeah. And he's like, no, nah, that's not true. We're still, a but we're still aiming for a 2020 holiday release. Right. So I'm assuming that everything is probably still on track right now. So I think, uh, supposedly. Yeah, supposedly. So I did get an email that the, my suit that's getting made for my wedding is, uh, being apparently been a little delayed because of the whole situation. <laughs> Single tier, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think it just, that just gives the that just gives the wife more time to make sure she she definitely wants to go through with this. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, <laughs> toxic. toxic. <laughs> but yeah, so that's why I think I think it's just kind of really reassuring. And like like we also talked about with you got Blaze earlier, kind of saying like how working from home can be a little bit more f effective, but it doesn't really slow things down, which is good to hear. But yeah. Okay um so yeah i guess we gotta move on to uh i say the we uh we had the appetizer we had the main course and i think it's time for dessert no nah, that's coming off no, weird he, no blaze <laughs> is the main course let's be real now, right? Right, yeah, yeah. he's the main freaking course <laughs> so yeah we got a uh, blaze here on the uh stream today guys uh for the podcast if you don't know blaze was part of the halo 5 sustain team uh, he was there for a year and a half. I believe you're probably working as a contractor, if I remember correctly, right? That's correct. Yes, yeah. And so uh, he was involved with a lot of uh, your favorite, probably Forge maps. So you probably were playing in Halo Five in some way or another, or just kind of create up some new playlists, fun things like that. And uh, I kind of wanted to go talk to him about. You know, he also was kind of like, I guess, like the. Were you like the the head of the uh, Mythic Arena playlist kind of being put into Halo 5? Yeah, so mm. I was managing it from the 343 side mm. um, and then had other community members managing specific sections or leading specific sections up. Right on. And so, uh, yeah, so I was thinking like maybe kind of start off with like a little bit, you know, before the before times when we talk about like well, basically, what got you into Halo? How did you first play it? You know, what made you, what made Halo so great that you just wanted to like, keep playing it more and more and make it like more than just a video game? Uh, well, back in, back whenever Halo 1 was the only game out, I had played it a handful of times with my friends and they were all obsessed with it. All of my friends played and played and played. And I actually really did not like Halo 1. It actually <laughs> pretty much turned me off of first-person shooters because I had wow. like GoldenEye and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I just honestly didn't like it at all. <laughs> um, and, but I played it because I was pretty good at it and all my friends played it. So, you know, just join in and hang out. That's what we were all doing for fun. Um, and I didn't really fall in love with the series until Halo 2. Halo 2 came out and I was like, I didn't really care for Halo 1, but I guess I'll give it a try <laughs> and played it and instantly become became obsessed just all the time uh, playing Halo 2. I was really big into like the uh, glitch community and like oh, yeah. uh, tricking community. So I would do like the trick jumps and speed runs oh, and yeah. <laughs> um, all that kind of stuff. And it kind of sparked my interest in level design a little bit, um, seeing like the outside of the campaign levels and how they were optimized and like missing textures on the back and just wondering why and how that all came to be as a kid. Um, and then got into the competitive scene as well. Um, played like local tournaments stuff like that oh, awesome. so with that um started to really recognize the reasons for the designs and all of that um and then halo 3 obviously forge came so forge was pretty much all i did i i played competitively for pretty much the entirety of halo 3 as well but i focused a lot of my time in creating levels and um, making different uh, experiences in that uh, game types, mm. everything. Um, and then that just carried on and continued. And 
by the time Reach came out, I wasn't really feeling the gameplay for Reach, so then it took over. <laughs> like <laughs> the yeah, so the level was great, design. Though. Yeah, mm, that's yeah, where that's I spent all of my time. Then, um, like first maybe a couple months or whatever, we played competitively and tried to get really good at it and learn the um, mechanics and all of that. And then I just pretty much dropped playing matchmaking almost altogether. Mm. Um, not that it was bad, but it just was not my cup of tea, <laughs> for yeah. lack of a better term. Mm. Um, and yeah, that just kind of spiraled into a world of level design where that's the majority of everything that I do now, level design, game design, um, and just slowly branched out into other aspects uh, especially working with the limitations of how um, Halo game types work and how the mapping works, uh, with all of those limitations, really gave me a broad experience of how to build a game more than just levels. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of how my path led me here. Mm. Uh, before I worked at 343, I worked on a couple of different indie games. Like uh, One was called Shooty Squad, which was a one-man uh, team. And I just reached out and asked if he needed some help, um, which was a good experience. Got some team experience. I worked on the Installation of One fan game for like two years, providing level design with them and getting team experience and worked on a game called reflex arena which is an old school um old school arena fps style game but brought into a modern era is like hyper competitive mm. um and then i think those are all the games i worked on before i got into 343 and it's weird because i always did level design but i got into 343 um as a uh, sustained designer, so doing playlists and stuff. And of course, at first I was like, that's interesting to me that I'm not like utilizing my expertise in this. But then once I got there, I really found out how much of that I would actually be useful mm. in the long run. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Something's breaking. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, for sustained design, you utilize a lot of different skills and I got experience in a lot of different things that I didn't quite have experience in um, on top of being able to utilize all the skills that I've learned over the years. Mm -hmm. well, that's awesome, man. And so um, I think you're like, I think you're involved with like the Forge Hub website quite a bit, if I remember correctly as well. Like you're working like a, like a lead moderator or something like that on there. Uh, I'm not, but I am a regular been on since okay. pretty much the conception mm -hmm. for the most part um and it's funny because right there it's actually up not really <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. yeah so i i've been around there for a really long time i've not been a moderator or anything back in halo 3 i was a premium which is just basically getting features on the front page mm. uh so many features would get you the like premium status or whatever just know um, that like you, you make good content you know it's you know people have seen your stuff they approve it and then they you know make sure like if when blaze puts something up you know it's good kind of thing but, yeah that's pretty mm. much what it was back then was just kind of the the highly skilled mappers that would have a different colored name so that people would know who to reach out to whenever you need help and mm -hmm. uh who to look at their content for like to kind of bridge your knowledge into a better understanding. Right on. Actually, it was kind of funny when you were mentioning about CE, and I was kind of feeling... Um, now, for back in the day, I thought that game was just, like, the greatest thing ever. But now, like, going back and playing it now, that's on PC, now I'm like, a lot of times I'm like, how did I enjoy this game this much? Because <laughs> there's, like, so many times I'm just like, just like, I'm like, mm, that should have hit. Nah, that should have hit him. <laughs> Hopefully you feel that way about Halo 3 when it comes out. 
realize what I've been talking no, about this whole time. No, that's not going to change. That's not changing, man. That's not changing. God, the freaking project. I can't stand VR. Yeah. I'm sorry. I have to say it again. Nowadays, there's a lot that I appreciate about CE. Like, mm-hmm. things that yeah. aren't directly apparent. Um, not that I necessarily enjoy playing the game as a whole. Um, I, I think it's fun, but there's definitely things to be improved. For oh, yeah. sure. Uh, uh, but you could say that about any game. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, uh, it's the yeah, first but, one too, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. I think they, I think back then, just being a kid, I didn't appreciate mm. everything that went into game design and to make the innov- or to innovate on the things that they did to make the game as great as it was for its time. Um, I didn't really appreciate it back then, but there's a lot of things that I appreciate now, just subtleties in oh, the yeah. game design that I wouldn't have noticed without uh, seeing different uh, perspectives from it. Mm. Agreed. Yeah, like the, the I jump. I want to ask you. Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was saying, like, I was kind of like adding to your point there. Like, yeah, the jump from CE to Halo 2 in gameplay and just and everything is drastically different like even like the mo- the movement is so much better in halo 2 the shooting feels yeah. so much more satisfying um the level, the level, the level design, design is different. much more coherent yeah. <laughs> the spawning way better oh my God, yeah. <laughs> and just everything so yeah like it's kind of crazy like thinking that they went they they with the, i think bungie kind of threw that together in basically like a year or yeah. maybe less and then having been so much better and different from Halo C, which was guaranteed gold at the time. It's kind of crazy to think about. But yeah, so back to your point there, Pat, you're going to make. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask about um, Mythic Arena. And I mean, I've heard, I've talked to you about this. I've talked to a lot of people about this, but basically a, a lot of people think that Mythic Arena is like a, a look in at Halo Infinite and I would probably say pump the brakes on that because it just seems to be more of a just a project that uh you know a bunch of people that were passionate about kind of bringing classic halo into halo 5 uh just a basically a new classic playlist with a little bit of a you know modern feel to it um i think that's what more the aim of mythic arena was and i was wondering if you could maybe shed some light on that and and maybe um just talk about what the inspirations for mythic arena were um because like i said i think you are a pretty big fan of Halo 5's base multiplayer, right? D- did you enjoy the mechanics of it? Because I-, I know I did, but I still love Mythic Arena, and it seems like some people are kind of, you know, maybe who didn't enjoy Halo 5's base mechanics actually really love Mythic Arena too, so I kind of in- uh, wanted to get your take on that. Yeah, so I think Halo 5's an amazing game. Um, I prefer the game pe- gameplay loops of the original titles and the... Um, just the way that the games play, I definitely prefer classic. Um, but Halo 5 is still one of my favorite games of all time, like no doubt. Um, there's so many great things about it, even if there are some aspects of the loop that I am not, that isn't my favorite mm-hmm. for, from the franchise. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, going on the point of Mythic Arena, um, it's actually kind of crazy people that are reluctant to like consider that these are it's made by a couple a small group of uh community developers that like there are there are some people that are just misinformed just don't know how game development works and how there are separate teams for each aspect of the game and even that halo 5 and Halo Infinite are two totally different teams, uh, let alone how the playlists come about. And uh, then there are those people that, um, even after you tell them how that it works, that they just straight up do not believe you. That, <laughs> um, that these like two community members that are leading the aspects of Mythic Arena weren't behind the entire entirety of the game design of Infinite in the last year that it's <laughs> being made mm-hmm. um it, yeah it's just a, i think a misunderstanding of how oh, yeah. game development works and stuff like that um regardless of how infinite turns out um 
Mythic Arena itself is literally just a community project, um, a passion project from specific members of the Forge community. Um, how I came to be a part of it is actually um, maybe a little bit before I started working at 343, there were game types going around different variants of what Mythic eventually became uh, that were called like there was uh, Evolved Slayer, which was a like Magnum Start classic style game type. And then there was a BR variant of it called Slap Slayer, which is uh, Sergeant Slaphead, who yeah. like, kind of uh, led the level design and art design aspect of Mythic Arena. And it was pretty much just primarily a variant of Evolved with BR starts, if I remember correctly. And I I loved Evolved. I thought it was great. Um, it was a little bit overly sweaty. Um, so I definitely saw the appeal of the BR start version a little bit more, uh, how it was accessible and uh, specifically how people flocked to it once we started testing. It really showed the potential that we got a couple people in for testing. And it, at this point, it was really hard to get playtest lobbies. Like, you you wanted to test a map, you had to, like, plan a week ahead and make sure that everyone's, in, uh, like, <laughs> actually dedicated yeah, yeah. to come and test it. But then once we started testing Mythic and different variants of it, um people were asking when when's the next lobby when are we having the next lobby and we we're having like a couple a week lobbies and it kind of just became a much bigger thing than we had expected it um even then i wasn't planning on doing a playlist of course i wanted to but i didn't know that it was going to be something as big as it was and as polished and um yeah so there was a couple couple different maps uh, the art style wasn't defined. There was like just pulling from random community maps that worked well with the settings to an extent. But then every single map that we were testing ended up getting remade from the ground up multiple times by Slap to make sure that every travel path was um, balanced with the weapons and the movement settings that we had uh, and working around the sandbox uh, limitations that Halo 5 was built for. Um, and it just got a larger scope and a larger scope. And um, eventually I was like, okay, we can, this is to a point where we can start to push this towards a playlist. And I'm going to, you know, talk to people that I work with, see if it's okay. And like we were doing. Monday lobbies every single Monday we would have Mythic Monday, um, and it just kept growing, kept growing, kept growing, and became what it is. That's uh, awesome. Mm, that's such a cool. Yeah. yeah and, so basically, no, they're not testing Infinite in Halo Five. <laughs> this yeah. just started with like really cool idea, and it ended up just being really fun to play. <laughs> yeah, this was definitely something before. Um, before I was even at 343. And then after I was at 343, I was still bringing on a primarily community-made project and just organizing it and helping them uh, produce the level of quality that they would need to to get mm. into matchmaking, which actually on the quality side, I don't think that I even needed to. I Maybe a little bit on the direction, but... Those guys just killed the quality. They were a pioneer of their own um, ambitions. So oh, yeah. every single time that I uh, asked for something, they did 150%, you know, always doing better than what I had set as a standard. Mm, yeah, like there's so many just like key forgers out there that just do an amazing job just every time. And it's kind of just like, I look at it, I'm just like, wow, there's, 
no it make, makes me almost not want to bother with forge i'm like there's no way i can make anything that good <laughs> yeah, I won't bother with forge. <laughs> it's just i'm not that creative yeah um, it's yeah a lot of the stuff they do is so good like i yeah, said so like the mythic arena playlist like the map design is pretty awesome it's still like with still like working within the limitations like the especially the visual limitations of halo 5's forge of making it look as much of a developer made map as possible what also can well, make okay. bring you back that classic feel from like the C in Halo Two days. Yeah, See, mm -hmm. yeah. That's, that's why it spoke to me so much. Was like no thrust or not no thrust, no no um Spartan charge and no ground pound, which was huge for me because those are two of the Halo Five mechanics I could do without. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty much fine with everything else in Halo Five, but um those two mechanics I just I don't they feel cheap to me. Um, almost, and I really liked that Mythic kind of got rid of those, and I kind of wanted to ask too, Blaze, like is was was that pretty early in the, con uh, the conceptual design uh, to get rid of those features, and was there ever, I I've got a lot of feedback from a couple friends that don't necessarily enjoy Mythic that much, um, that feel like the BR, H2 BR is just too much of a laser, um, like, has there ever been considered? I don't have a problem with it. I love the Halo BR. I, I love Halo 2, so it does, it's not a problem for me. But was there ever, like, a... I know you said there was CE Magnum starts. Was there ever Halo 5 Magnum starts considered as a as a primary weapon? Oh, that's actually what it was. It was the Halo 5 Magnum start. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, despite the name evolved. Okay. Um, yeah, it was just the vanilla Halo 5 uh, Magnum. That's what it started out as. It went to the Halo 2 BR, it went back to the, or, yeah, went back to the Magnum, went to the standard Halo 5 BR, we went to Jet BR, uh, we tried literally every combination of things that you could imagine out of the, like, BRs and uh, pistol starts, and for, for even the limitations that we had, like, we experimented a lot. Um, of course, we also, everybody that developed it also agrees that the Halo 2 BR could benefit from less uh, aim assist and bullet magnetism for sure. Mm -hmm. um, this other tuning aspects, if we had the control over it, we definitely would have done too. Um, for example, maybe slowing down the bullet rate so that it's like a fast moving projectile or the time in between shots lengthening that. Uh, so there's there are plenty of things that we definitely would change if we had the ability to. Um, the Halo 2 BR was just the the best option for the experience that we are going for. Um, it doesn't just add to the or it doesn't just feel like the best option for an accessible and um, nostalgic sort of gameplay but also added different aspects as well uh, to that. Um, for the pistol, for example, we want you to not feel like you're sluggish and moving real slow. Like if you go back to play Halo 3, you feel like you're walking mm -hmm. in sand, mm -hmm. like you're walking pretty <laughs> slow in that game. Um, mm -hmm. And while that isn't necessarily a bad thing, it does feel better to go faster. Um, yeah. But moving that speed up then uh if you have the pistol and you're like strafing at a higher acceleration with that um it's impossible to land shots face to face so it would turn it into a beat down fight every time or um different aspects like that uh the halo 5 br reason we didn't go with that is literally just because it doesn't feel good um <laughs> yeah. you, pretty it, much <laughs> it doesn't it's not that it is just a bad weapon altogether for the sandbox that we created um but whenever you were shooting it there was often times where you feel like you're shooting shots and it's not hitting or like you don't get the feedback that you want or there's too much kick or like there's a bunch of aspects of it that just doesn't feel smooth and like the experience that we wanted to provide mm -hmm. um so not only did we consider the balance that we wanted to strike uh with the gameplay but we also had a balance 
of what kind of um, aesthetic we're going for, what kind of feeling we're going for, the smoothness of like old titles. Like if you go back to play Halo 2, it still feels as smooth as it did back then, but then you don't have any of the quality of life features that were implemented into Halo 5. Mm. Um, so of course we have our, our different things that we would change about it if we had more control over that. Um, but seeing as it was made in all user-facing tools, uh, we did have to make some sacrifices and um, pick the best option for the overall product or the feeling of the project. Um, That's how you guys accomplish yeah. that for sure. Yeah, I have like all the possible starting weapons he had. I think probably that was the best one to go with, really. Yeah, actually, to add to that also, I don't know about you guys, but I get way more perfect kills with the Halo 5 pistol and the Halo 5 sandbox than I ever do with the Halo 2 BR. And really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would say because so. Because. Yeah your strafe acceleration is much higher and uh, I hardly ever get perfect kills in <laughs> mythic in comparison. Mm. Like maybe one out of uh, five is like a perfect kill or one out of maybe 10, somewhere in between there. Um, but then you go into halo five vanilla and I'm like having a pistol fight with somebody. It's like, I don't know, like half of the time I'm getting perfect kills, even with people that are like mad strafing and whatnot. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think in comparison, relative to the like scale of the maps and the strafe acceleration that you have and everything, I think it's more balanced than what people say, uh, even mm. though I think it still can definitely be improved. Um, I think it just feels like a laser a lot of time, I don't want to blame the player at all for this, but a lot of time, if you put yourself in a bad situation, yeah. you're not going to get out of it. You're pay and mm. yeah, and not to say that that's inherently the player's fault, because we, if we could do things about that, we would definitely do things about it. But um, there, there's other aspects to it other than it just being a laser that causes it to feel that way. I think. Oh, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I definitely yeah, have yeah, noticed yeah. it's a little yeah. tricky to like, yeah, if you're like yeah, if you're turn on a guy, on a guy it's like, it seems like a lot of the battles do kind of be like a uh, person who gets the first shot and t wins more often, but that's kind of like, well, every, a lot of gunfights in Halo, you know, or just right. shooters in general, really. Um, but yeah, like I said, I kind of understand those concerns and yeah, like I wish it was a little bit less, but you know, like I said, I think for the gameplay you guys are going for, plus it's a little bit of a nostalgic kind of playlist as well with, with a new updated gameplay that the halo 2 battle rifle is probably the best option you guys had to go with right there yeah, yeah actually yeah. also had a, actually i also had a question how long did it take for you guys from like conception of the playlist to release in december then we when i met when i met you the first time at the that barbecue uh after the 343 meetup uh, you're showing me, uh, you're showing like, me, you're like, check out what we're working on. And I was like, that's really cool. Like, that's really cool. But I was like back in August. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it was a while. Pretty much the entirety of my contract, um, it was going on. Uh, oh, wow. At the beginning, I wasn't pursuing it as a sustained beat by any means. Um, but they were still working on that and kind of making their own things, um, not even considering that it was a possibility to get it into matchmaking. Mm. Um, and then I would say it was probably about a year, um, a little over a year in development. It's probably August, the August before I told you about it. Really? When we started. <laughs> um, Jeez. yeah. Uh, so it would have been like right after I got hired on um, and we started having our Mythic Mondays and really started to focus on what the core map line out, lineup would consist of and how those maps would be distributed in style and color. Like we'll, that's something we even went into like the color, the individual colors of the maps to separate them, mm. to make them more identifiable. Uh, similar to old or the classic halos um 
so we went through all the planning phases like that and defined the art style. And it was probably around maybe like June, right around the time of Reach's uh, announcement, the Reach and PC MCC announcement. Uh, actually, probably right before that is whenever we started pursuing it as a sustained beat and putting deadlines in place to start meeting the all the ultimate deadline that we had to release in december that's awesome i see like that's, like, that's yeah, i don't think people realize how long it takes how much of a how long of a process it is to make up these kind of modes and playlists and implement them into halo 5 or just games in general in halo you know, because I've been, I see comments I see like when I'm making like Halo 2 anniversary flight news, like they should remaster all the maps. I'm like, do you, you don't realize how long that's going to take? Because, <laughs> because right. I'm sure, because you, because like, you were inviting mm -hmm. me quite often to try to get involved with some of that play testing. And I was only able to get into one just because I'm doing other things and just schedule lineups were just weren't really working out too well. Um, but yeah, you guys were like always constantly like testing like once a week or more, even trying to get that gameplay down right. And um, I think you're also maybe a little bit involved with like that BTP refresh as well. If I remember correctly, that happened last year. Yeah, hmm. actually, um, I you don't have to bring this up or anything, but on my ArtStation website, I I think I have a link to it on my Twitter. Um, there is a sustain section where you can go through and see all of the uh, the content beats that we had hmm. during the time that I was there. I think there was maybe twenty, maybe twenty content beats. So, the, so we had like monthly uh, releases, basically the whole entire time that I was there. Um, the BTB refresh was one of them. Uh, that was another one of our high scoped projects where it took us. I think the Forgers were working on it for about a year before release, and we started really like pushing into that content maybe like six months out, something like that. Um, that was definitely another big project yeah. for us. Yeah, you guys are really trying. You guys were doing a lot of testing for that one. That, but that, that refresh yeah. turned out to be awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah, we could definitely put a link uh, when we, because we always <laughs> link our guests, like, you know, social media and stuff. We definitely put a link to that in the description uh, of, of the video uh, for people to check that out. I think that'd be pretty cool for people to go check that out. You also, I... I think I remember correctly, you've worked on some stuff with Splitgate, right? A game I really haven't tried, um, but I really want to because I heard there's a lot of similarities to Halo uh, with that game. And uh, I don't know if you want to touch uh, any any bit on, on the stuff you've worked on there. Yeah, so... Um... I think he froze. <laughs> It, I think he's just he's for really us. good at he's shoot. really concentrating. <laughs> he's like he's, he's like he's, <laughs> he's like Drax from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, right? He's like I'm there perfectly you still. Can you still hear me? <laughs> yeah, we can still yeah, hear you. Yeah, we can hear you now. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. Maybe it's because I'm changing things on the computer here, but um, yeah. So I have um, I made a layout for them originally, just as something to do in my free time. Uh, which would have been Abyss, if anybody has played it. That's um, the first layout that I did for them. It's kind of just an example layout, but they liked it enough that they wanted to pursue it as an uh, official one. Uh, and recently, actually, after my contract ended with 343 um, Cardinal from Splitgate, um, reached out to me and I started doing uh, part-time level design for them. So you'll definitely see more from me on that in the future. Um, as far as comparison to Halo, I would disagree for the most part. I think there are some visual aspects to Halo. There are definitely some little bits of similarities to it. Um, but the overall gameplay loop is a little bit different. Uh, oh, yeah. Drastically different in the sense of the portals. But even outside of the portals, I would compare it a little bit more to something like Black Ops 3 or uh, even in some some minor ways of like the gunplay, Destiny might be a mm -hmm. good example. Um, 
But yeah, if you went in, you would definitely notice similarities with Halo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the gameplay loop is just a little bit different than what uh, people compare it. I think. And the movements a lot uh, faster that as well, or... right? Like the movements really. Uh, you can like you can fast, you can yeah. hop around quite a bit. Like even like kind of almost like Quake in a way of how fast you can move yeah. around. And also, I think yeah, people was made like the. Oh, sorry, go, go, continue, Pat. What were you gonna say? No, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say that. Also, I think a lot of people just kind of draw the comparisons because they're like arena style maps and they're pickup weapons. Yeah. And there's like a yeah, battle, and then like there's a battle rifle. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, it looks. Like, I'll just say I've seen something that looks strangely like the battle rifle, and I think that's where a lot of people maybe get their comparisons. Mm. But I mean, yeah, my, the art style uh, definitely is the biggest influence, yeah. and the arena maps, like you mentioned. Mm. Yeah. Um. Mm movement and stuff is pretty different uh they do have like a shield system similar to halo um overall i think if you look at it as a whole it plays very different from halo but you might be able to find some things that you appreciate in halo that carried over to that um mm. because of the gimmick the gameplay loop definitely had to be mm. a little bit separate yeah and um i think are you still working with uh soon studios it's kind of getting that game going together um no unfortunately not working with them too awful much i'm more or less just there uh to answer questions anytime somebody comes to me about a question i'm happy to answer it and everything but i haven't been doing any new content for them mostly because they're focused on finishing the content that they're already mm -hmm. working on and trying to get it to a releasable state rather than starting a bunch of new yeah. um new projects within there understandable i got a chance to play a little bit when you know at that barbecue we were at and like seeing like the but it's in, uh, built in unreal 4 if i remember correctly uh unity unity actually. that's right that's right yeah yeah and um like the visuals on it are great honestly like they look so good and uh like the remake that they did of uh beaver creek in that game like i love like the, they made like a cold icy version of beaver creek and then like with these like really this so it makes it like, like the reds and the blues like really stand out brain just looks really, just gorgeous and uh i was like how long do you hope do you have any idea like what their time frame might be like do could we possibly see like a 2020 release of uh installation 01 i can't really say Mm -hmm. um, I will say that they did post a teaser recently and maybe even more information, um, but they had a, a looping video that said, soon, no more. I saw that, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I'm assuming is hinting at the fact that it's being pushed for release, mm -hmm. that they have a date in mind. Um, I don't know if they put a date out publicly, um, they might need to finish up some more things before they really uh, are confident on a date that they can put it out. Also, I think that they will need to communicate with 343 to make sure that they don't overlap with the release of MCC or mm -hmm. anything like that. Um, so I don't know if they can put any official date on it, but they hope to get it out soon. Right. <laughs> of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know a lot of people are looking forward to that myself as well. I think it's it's just multiplayer, right? Just a multiplayer created game, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so multiplayer is the only thing uh, planned for. Right on, right on. Uh, actually, I have a lot of question about... Um, I know that like 343 has hired people for specifically for forging. Like I know that was a wavering zoo recently uh, got hired on to do forging. Is it, so I'm just kind of curious, like... When it comes to, are they just like on the Xbox, just kind of forging all day, every day when it comes to doing that stuff? Or what kind of stuff is involved with that? Because I feel like it would be more than just like playing around in Forge. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not exactly sure how much I can say about mm -hmm. that. But I believe that the position is a um, Forge content creator. So, um, from that, I would speculate that they are making Forge maps to release with the game, similar to how uh, past games mm -hmm. have, um, but there are more level design-oriented positions 
as opposed to just examples of what you can create in mm-hmm. Forge. Um, that would be what I guess from that, but I can't really say for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right on, right on. Cool. But yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm about out of questions. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we're I mean, yeah, I mean, can go on and on, but I think uh, I think I've kind of like uh, hit the kind of a lot of the notes I wanted to hit on. Um, but or yeah. how about this? Like, what was probably one of your favorite experiences working at Three Four Three, not part of the Halo Five Sustain team? I really enjoyed just about everything. Um, mm. That. That position in general was just a ton of fun, like more more enjoyable than I could ever imagine. Uh, and it's it's weird because whenever I originally was interviewing for the position, like of course I was excited and thought that I would be able to nail whatever <laughs> position that they uh, give me. But at the same time, I didn't have experience or didn't think that I had experience in this field because it wasn't what I do on a normal day-to-day basis. And then I ended up being a lot more like that. Mm. Um, so pretty much just working in general was just <laughs> the, yeah. the best experience because um, it's what I've been doing for how many years and just on a larger scale and making a larger impact. Uh, I guess something else that I can point out is... Uh, I did a couple like make a wish events and stuff like that. That was really fun too to see like aspiring uh, game designers come in, little uh, children that um, just wanted to learn and wanted to know the process of that and being able to sit down with them and teach them some stuff. Um, Randy and I both paired up and did a couple of those together and that was really really fun to mm-hmm. do as well that's awesome that's awesome actually i kind of want to like, do a quick run through so then like people who are listening who might not know will know like all the stuff you've been involved with when it comes to halo 5's uh sustained you know team that i thought it'd be kind of cool thing to run through like these all the playlists that you've kind of helped work on the same thanks for that link you just put in the chat for the the playlist updates right here so you got yeah, like no problem. Yeah, the Forerunner Slayer playlist. Yeah, the new SWAT editions. You had Roaming King, which Just I don't, don't, don't. I hope you didn't do Castle Wars. <laughs> hey, Castle Wars is one of the most popular. It is. It, it is so popular. It's just not my cup of tea, man. It's not my cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you on that. I, it's not something that I mm. necessarily enjoy playing, but I'm glad that there are people that enjoy playing it. Yeah, I'm glad course, that yeah. that experience could be provided for them. I kind of, but no, it. I, I wasn't a part of it. <laughs> I think it's fun. I think it's like so silly fun. I mean, but to each their own, right? But yeah, you got like other playlists that you worked on, like a uh, Roaming King playlist, which I love. Roaming King, that is Roman King, yeah. super fun. There, pretty much every time that mode comes out, like I got to play at least like five games, and you know, just get some time time in playing that. Uh, Big Team Super Fiesta, which is still I think one of the most popular modes in Halo Five. Uh, you had the Halloween Infection update as well. Uh, community doubles round two, which the community doubles plays, I think, was awesome as well. Like the four traps were like so well done, and this like made so unique looking masks while also being just, just I guess, I just fun to play, which is cool. Hall, everyone's favorite holiday fiesta, I think, it's universally praised as just being awesome. Um, the head to head playlist, which actually was a really cool, like a lot of really cool, like nuances that were done with that mode as well, with some new maps and stuff like that. Uh, ranked doubles update. You yeah, had the ranked free for all editions as well. Uh, hardcore super fiesta, <laughs> which I it's which is coming back on April first, which I thought was like very uh, thematic for that playlist. <laughs> oh, did they announce that it's coming back? Yeah, on April first, on the recent when Unishex recent uh, cool. community update put that up. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, the BTB <laughs> refresh you're involved with. Uh, Husky raid, love me some Husky raid. Husky Raid's dope. Action Sack Refresh, ODST Slayer, uh, 2v2 Competitive Mode right there. And of course, like we've been talking about, Mythic Arena. 
um, Mythic Rumble, and then uh, community the community Slayer rounds as well. So just, I'm sure a lot of people you were like probably playing Halo Five, like yeah, this is pretty cool Forge stuff. Well, Blaze Arrow is uh, pretty much the lead behind most of that kind of stuff, and so you can thank him for kind of helping implement that stuff into your your favorite shooter. So that, that was a lot. Pretty cool stuff to put, be able to put your name on there. Whether that was pretty awesome to kind of shout out right there. But yeah, yeah, the real, real credit goes out to all of the forgers and the content creators. Um, I'm just the organization behind it that pushes it to the quality that it needed to be mm-hmm. for matchmaking and put it all together. Um, also, Randy, oh, yeah, Randy, Randy well, yeah. three five five, mm-hmm. definitely, um, just as much a part of all of these as I am. Mm, yeah, so awesome, awesome stuff, man. Well, I guess, yeah, I think that's uh, about everything, cool. man. Oh, you got one we thing? Got, we got to go over uh, playlist updates, too. Uh, uh, before we, so we didn't mention it, so might as well talk about it, right? Yes. Yes. Speaking <laughs> of which, uh, 343 recently announced that uh, weekly, you'll be getting a gold Warzone and Arena XP pack, which has 20 gold boosts inside of them which is awesome so i'm under 3 million left to 152 now so definitely going to help in the final push to 152 uh like we just talked about they announced the upcoming schedule for uh, halo 5 guardians so right now we have triple team which is um double xp uh mythic arena is still double xp and ranked and we have core play coming in for triple team on March 26th and Warzone Turbo going live for the weekend on March 26th. And like Kevin mentioned, Hardcore Super Fiesta April 1st rotates in for ranked in April. And Covey Slayer is coming in for core play on April 2nd. Shout out on my birthday, Rock and Rails coming back. So thank you, 343. I know you guys love me <laughs> so much. Um, appreciate that. So if I'm not 152 by then, we'll definitely be finishing it on my stream that'd be cool to do you've only tweeted and, at uni a uh, hundred times about when's record ro- when's rock and roll coming back yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and then uh bam <laughs> for two weeks <laughs> boom uh and then we have some more zone firefight news so basically um it seems that uh legendary uh wars on firefight is getting consolidated into heroic firefight yes but they're gonna change the uh xp gains for heroic to be more in line with legendary firefight so that's kind of cool um while mythic will be staying as well um so they're consolidating you know we talked about consolidation of playlists for halo 5 that was going to be something you know coming up throughout the year so we'll keep you guys updated on that and i guess it'd be nice to mention a thumbnail the uh new book coming out Mm -hmm. uh, for uh from troy denning the shadows of reach which has our boy Beefy Chief from Halo Infinite looking nice with a blue team. So who knows? Maybe they're in Infinite. Uh, that would be pretty cool. Uh, they're returning to Reach. So that's definitely probably something. I'm actually, I really don't read books anymore, uh, which I probably should. Um, and I love the fall of Reach, so I might actually pick this one up and read it. I think that'd be really cool. It's got an awesome mm. cover. Yeah, it takes place um, um, like what, like a few months or like a couple years After. before Infinite. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Supposedly, definitely, yeah, it's definitely between Halo Five and Infinite. Yeah. So um, that's really cool. It looks pretty dope. So and I'll the, definitely be checking that one out. The new armor on Blue Team as well looks pretty freaking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So sure. uh, hopefully that's how they mm. will look in Infinite uh, if they are. And also, uh, I need a picture of Arbiter uh, yeah, right. from, from Infinite, please. <laughs> right. <laughs> but then also, uh, with the uh, MCC got playlist update with that, they rotated out CEA in Reach for um, Fiesta for just all modes right now as well. You can hop in and play some Fiesta, which people do love their Fiesta, especially in Halo 5. I think Super Fiesta has sure always been like the most popular mode in the game. So cool stuff there. Well, I guess uh, so. We give a little shout outs here. So we'll start off with you, Blaze. Where can people find your stuff on the internet? If they want to check out what you do. I believe uh, Twitter would be the best place to get a hold of me or take a look at my content, um, and that is at Blaze Dylan. I I believe that's what it is. Um, my pinned tweet has my portfolio you can check out all the things i work on it's going to grow pretty massively over the next couple months 
um, with new releases and stuff. Um, other than that, I'm not too, too active anywhere else. So, like you can hit me up on discord. Um, you could probably just find me in any community discord anywhere. I'm not mm-hmm. entirely sure what the numbers are at the end of my name, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's where to get a hold of me. Awesome. Right on. Yeah, definitely give him a follow, guys. You're watching the video. That is his Twitter handle on the uh, the screen there as well. So give him a follow. Definitely worth play. It's a super nice guy. So definitely give him a follow. What about you, Pat? Where can people find your content on the internet? Well, thank you for asking, Kevin. Uh, you could find me on Twitter at the Batman Gaming. Uh, on Twitch, same thing, the Batman Gaming. Uh, YouTube, youtube.com slash Batman Gaming. Uh, you know, if you go to my Twitter, you'll find all my links to all my social media down there uh on twitter and uh yeah definitely give blaze a follow this was probably my favorite interview dude this was this was mm-hmm. pretty awesome blaze so thank you for coming by dude uh but before we end the show kevin, no problem <laughs> where can people find you uh like you see on the screen at kevin cool x halo on twitter you can also find me on youtube kevin cool x uh instagram kevin cool x twitch kevin cool x all links for everyone's content is going to be in the description on YouTube and on Podbean and Spotify. Like we always say at the end of the podcast, guys, if you want to listen into the podcast without having to waste your phone battery with the screen being open on YouTube, check us out on Spotify and Podbean. And you can uh, save your battery and be just as informed. But you will be missing out on our beautiful faces, though. That's the downside. You would. You would. That, mm-hmm. That's a major downside. And also, I've tested <laughs> this, and it feels really good. But if you have an Amazon Echo device, I'm not going to say her name, but you know how to activate her because she's listening right now to me. You could tell her to play the latest episode of the Halo Outreach podcast. I she actually did not know that. That's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty cool feeling. So, that's awesome. Um, you could, Yeah, you could uh, tell uh, that chick that starts with an A, uh, to play Halo Outreach podcast, and she will do it. So We're well. SEO friendly, Pat. We've made it. Yeah, <laughs> we made it. <laughs> right on. But yeah, so uh, thanks to everyone, as always, for checking out the podcast, listening and watching, wherever platform you're checking us out on, even on our uh, now on Amazon's always listening FBI device. And uh, Blaze, thank you so much for coming by and uh, spending some time with us on the podcast and a chat because uh, we've been trying to line this up a bit. But obviously, you, when you were at three four three, you're pr- they were keeping you pretty busy over there, which it seems like they do with a lot of people at three four three. They're like, if I have time, <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> but yeah, so thank you so much for coming by, man. It was a really good conversation and really insightful. And uh, hopefully, listeners enjoyed it as well. As always, Pat, thank you every week hopping on, Absolutely. chatting up. And, uh, yeah, I guess we'll have to catch you all in the next one next week. Peace out. Peace.